So if you guys can just pull up that PDF, I'll just quickly show that. Sorry, guys, we have so much to talk about with masks. It, it's, there is certainly a lot to talk about, but we don't want to um, go on for too long for you guys. So I'll try and do this pretty quickly. But I do think it's helpful to see some of the practical sides of it. And certainly uh, at the end, Simon and Kevin, if I say anything incorrect, you know, I'm, I'm really not an expert before the pandemic. I didn't know anything about masks. And uh, people like Simon and Kevin taught me so much about this topic. So um, I'm hoping to tra help translate that to, uh, to you guys today. Um, so the um, fit, uh, filtration, uh, efficiency, and the function of your mask is very key to prevent that um, inhalation of aerosols. Uh, so you can see here we have a nice little diagram that shows at the left, it's probably not, it's still going to be helpful for aerosols, but the filters uh, towards the right of the screen are going to be quite a bit more helpful. And the same with the fit of your mask. So um, there's different sort of tips and tricks we can do to try and improve the fit and then we can get fancier and get a really um, approved standardized respirator um, or even fancier uh, type equipment that's going to be even better protection. And we already talked about function where we want the mask that you choose to be breathable and comfortable and of course also affordable. It would be great if we had a more uh, universal access to these fancier respirators within Canada and I hope that um, that may still be an option, even if they're more affordable, um, but uh, uh, more universal access would be really nice. So I'm just going to start by showing you guys a surgical mask. Um, here is a ASTM level three surgical mask this is by a Canadian company, VitaCor. And um, so what that means is it's an excellent fluid barrier. Um, and it's actually decent at filtering uh, aerosols. Um, however, you can see it's not the best fit. So there's some gaps on the sides here. There's gaps underneath. There's even some gaps around the nose, even though I'm pressing it down because it's not that tight either. So if I blow out, I can feel all my breath coming at the side. So it's probably leaking 20 to 50 percent of the air is not even going through the mask, even though the material is excellent. It's going around. Um, so how do I improve that? One option is to just use a simple um, ear saver. And what I would do there is pull it back. I'm not going to put it on here, but I would hook that on. So now I'm making my uh, mask basically a headband type mask. It's going to take less pressure on your ears and it's also going to uh, tighten it up against your face to get rid of some of this gaps. Um, one another option, which is fairly easy since many of us have lots of pretty cloth masks that we've bought over the last year. So you don't have to throw them out. You can still use them. So you put a fancier mask underneath, one that has a more proven filtration efficiency, and then you can take a cloth mask over top. So what that does is it tightens up the sides here so that there's not as much gapping. When I breathe out now, I don't feel quite as much air, and I can adjust this as well um, to fit it better. And then the other thing is um, I would choose not this one um, because this one's too thick. So I have way too many layers on here. It's feeling hot. It's kind of hard to breathe. So if you are going to do that, um, I would recommend a thinner cloth mask and one that does fit tight to your face because it's almost you're using the cloth mask like a brace. And finally, I'm going to show you what a mask brace looks like here. So um, this one is a fit, the, uh, fix the mask, mask brace. Um, uh, which can be purchased. You can also make these. They have designs online for making them. Um, and you can also um, uh, 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 wait for some newer ones that are coming out. There's a Canadian made model that's sort of like a plastic shell that fits over the mask and under it, which looks really cool. So keep your eyes out for that. So the idea here, and you should do this in front of the mirror, and uh, I'm just going to put this on my nose here. Okay, bear with me. This isn't something that, you know, you would want to do, sorry, there we go. Um, it's not something that you would want to be wearing if you had to take it on and off multiple times in the day, because it is a bit finicky. Try not to make it look too silly here. Okay, and I'm gonna put that on like that. So you can see here, the uh, nose piece is fitting along the bridge of my nose. It's going on the sides, it's going under my chin, and there's nothing leaking out the sides here. So now when I breathe in and out, all the air is coming through the mask. I don't feel anything leak. I could even do an actual seal check. So what I do is cut my hands over my mouth like this, inhale in and, and exhale. And when I inhale sharply, I'll feel the mask material 
uh, come in towards my face. And when I exhaled, I felt it bulge out. So this is actually a really good option. This is probably almost as good as a respirator. Um, obviously, it's uh, uh, impromptu. It's sort of a DIY type of option because of pandemic. It's not going to be approved for healthcare workers and high risk workers, but it's going to do a pretty good job. And you have a nice fit for this. So certainly something to think about if you have a bunch of procedure masks that you know are decent quality lying around, you can get yourself a mask brace. Uh, next, I'm going to just quickly show you guys that uh, Kevin mentioned it previously, a KN95 uh, style. So this is an ear loop uh, model. It's bifold. So what you have to do when you open these bifold ones up is actually press down the metal thing first at the top of the, ear, uh, the uh, nose piece. If you don't do that, it makes a fold and you'll have a leak spot there. I'm going to cup it on my face, okay, and I'm going to press that down on the sides. And you can see this mask was designed to fit around my face, so there's no big gaps um, or leak points there. The problem is it's not quite as tight because of the ear loop design, as uh, Simon was explaining. So uh, because of that, if I really blow out, I can feel a bit of air coming out the sides here. So how could I improve that even further? If I was just going, you know, to a well-ventilated grocery store and maintaining my distance, this is probably good enough. It's easy to put on and off. Uh, but if I really want to, um, you know, increase my safety, I could even add a um, ear saver to the back. And now I'm really tightening it up. So now um, if I blow out, I really don't feel anything leaking out. So that is certainly an option to improve the fit of that mask. Um this is, I won't put this one on, but that's a true uh, N95 approved uh, mask. So the reason the reason this one's approved uh, NIOSH N95, well, sorry, it's not NIOSH approved because it's a new uh, Canadian model. Uh, but the, uh, the, oh, not done yet, Ellie. Sorry, that's my daughter there. Um, so the reason this one is uh, better for healthcare is because it has the headband versus the um, ear loop design here. Um, and finally, I should have kept Ellie in here to show her the children's mask, which I almost got to, but she probably wouldn't cooperate. So here's a, this one folds open like three, like this. Okay. And this is the one I wear at work. Um, I've been wearing it for almost a year now. Very comfortable. You kind of push in the sides a little bit, um, and it cups on your face. Put the top uh, strap up here, bottom strap down here. I'm going to pull it down and up. Press that down here. And now I'm gonna try a seal check. So I'm gonna put my cut my hands over, inhale sharply. I feel the mask coming in. I'm gonna exhale. I feel it bulge out. I don't feel anything leaking around my eyes or around my the cheeks. So this fits really well. And I've passed a fit test on this mask with a, a port account test, so of 200, which is the perfect you can get on that. So I do know that it does fit well for me. Um, and I should mention this is CAN99. That means it has very, even better than 95% uh, uh, particle filtration efficiency. Here is a kid's mask. Um, this one is the uh, Canada Strong one. They're quite cute. Um, I know a bunch of kids who are wearing these now to school and actually uh, everyone that I've heard from has said that their kids find them more comfortable than their old uh, cloth masks. Um, these are ear loop models, so obviously they're not going to be a perfect um, seal to the face, uh, but they do a pretty good job, um, and obviously the material is excellent. Um, and then just finally, I want to show you guys a reusable um, model. So this is an Envo mask, um, so you could sort of think of it like a, a, a type of elastomeric. Um, it's actually fairly affordable if you're going to use it every day. Um, and this one, it comes with a head strap as well, but this one has ear loops, which you can actually just hook them over your head because that's obviously a better fit. Just give me a second. So I'm adjusting this here. So because it's silicone, um, it's very comfortable and it fits most face shapes. So let's do a seal check. It's sucking in towards my face, bulging out and there's no leakage here. It does have a valve um, and people are very worried about the valves, but there's always, there's often a little bit of leakage and there's a lot of leakage with a surgical mask. So there's actually less leakage with this um, for search. So this is better source control than a surgical mask, um, but you could also tape the valve um, so that the air just filters out through this material and it would still, it would work even better for source control. 
So my only thing about this is it does look kind of silly. So we're not used to seeing people walking around like this. So it doesn't meet the fourth F, which is fashion. But otherwise, it's an excellent option. It's very comfortable and it uh, is a very good mask. So I think that's it. I'm going to take this off and stop looking silly. I love it so very, very much, Dr. McDonald, and especially with that fourth F of fashion. I'm going to pop back up your fit slide again mm -hmm. before we say goodbye to this portion of the presentation because we had some requests on the YouTube to have a look at it again. But sure. of all of the masks you talked about, you'd mentioned that the tiny humans ones had come from Canada mm -hmm. Strong. We've been getting a lot of questions in on both Twitter and in the YouTube stream around where to shop. Where to shop for masks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have a uh, the Mask for Canada created a document that has a list of a lot of the ones that have been Health Canada authorized. Um, the, the sort of that um, extra layer of um, uh, standardization that, and that Simon's been talking about so that you avoid the counterfeit ones. So if they're on that list, as well as on that CDC list that he talked about um, to avoid the counterfeit ones, then you know they're better. So we can probably link that up somewhere. It's It's got a lot of good options, um, but there's lots of nice Canadian options now. I, think, uh, I don't want to leave any out, but Eclipse, uh, Canada Strong, uh, VitaCore. Um, I think there's a, a, a Canada Mask with a Q. Um, so there's a, a bunch of uh, companies that have really stepped up. Um, there's other companies that are working on other um uh, reusable models, which are excellent. Um, um, so I think uh, there's, and I think most of those are on that uh, document. 